Well, hello people, and welcome back to part 15 of Edinburgh House City Skylines 2 series. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Today, we're going to expand the north side of the town with some public transport, office, mixed use, and some low rent housing as well. Really fun episode, so please enjoy the expanse of North Inverneg. So last episode when we built our geology institute i asked you guys for name suggestions and lazarus and tygon combined in the comment section to come up with uh, the william smelly who apparently is a scottish geologist geological institute of technical studies or smelly gets for sure <laughs> which is which is perfect um absolutely fantastic name so thank you for the suggestions and indeed this little out of town campus sits really nicely as part of the uh, area now doesn't it Need what we're going to do today is kind of hop over to the other side because uh, I want to start developing some industrial office space around here and also continue to develop our canal district as well, uh, which I think is where we're going to start the episode. So we unlocked a signature building in the commercial sector, uh, Villa City, which is an old style soda bar with large rooftop terrace where patrons can enjoy their beverage while taking on the sights. And this sounds like the perfect kind of waterfront bar for me, right? Now, the wonderful person who named Inverneg is one of our patrons called Anthony. And this is going to become Anthony's Bar and Grill on the waterfront. But what does this actually do? It's minus 1% import cost. Well, nothing actually imports at the minute, so <laughs> that's that's kind of broken. Uh, plus 1% city attractiveness, I guess that's nice, but 1% seems quite a meaningless buff, doesn't it, I think? And then plus 3% well-being, that's always good if people are better off, right? Uh, so we'll hopefully see some of the employees come and go and then we can name actual Anthony himself once he arrives here but uh, thankfully a business has moved in so then we'll continue to flesh out our canal district with uh, plenty of mixed use zoning i want to try and get some different shapes and sizes in here maybe the occasional european row house in between there as well there we go i want to make sure these corners where we have the kind of fractured zoning is where we have the mixed use because uh, of course there the texture extends doesn't it we talked about that kind of poor man's surface painter before we'll keep this going i also want to get some more row housed in as well so why don't we keep this going there and we'll have different sort of shapes and sizes of it i reckon be a touch more mixed use on that corner too yeah and then we'll start fading some office space up here so we placed some service assets down as we needed them a couple of episodes ago so we've got the taxi depot over here bus depot uh, and the wastewater treatment plant. So I think the wastewater treatment plant itself, it kind of looks more like kind of the headquarters of the water company, doesn't it? As opposed to the actual treatment plant itself. So I think we're going to factor this into the actual office park, uh, which I think is going to lie here. Uh, so I want to make sure we're on the same terrain layer as this uh, road that sits as part of the key. So let's grab this height and let's push everyone out toward it. Help if I'm on the right tool, wouldn't it? I don't want any like stuff like this developing, so we'll have to be careful of blending back into layers that are lower than this. This is going to serve as our office park, I think. It'll also be a nice little introduction into kind of the industrial mining sector, which is a bit further down the road, of course. Well, literally there, actually. Didn't realise how close we were. <laughs> I thought it was a bit further away. But uh, yeah, up here seems like a good shout, doesn't it? Also want to develop some, uh, what's it called? Low rent housing around here as well. Uh, to complement this tower, we'll have some kind of low rent towers by the tracks, I think. Cool, so that's growing up, that's going to be quite nice. So we'll start drawing up some roads here. And let's go there for right now. And then we'll position our wastewater treatment plant. Let's grab this. Right about here. Yeah, and I want that big water logo facing the road. It kind of looks like the company headquarters of the water company, right? The water firm. Uh, which I guess we could name. If you have any suggestions for what Edinburgh's water company would be called, please feel free to get them in the comments. I'm happy to name it if you guys want to have a crack at it. And I reckon we'll go for a couple of small parking lots around the edge of this building, which will probably help service the entire um, office park as well today. Oh, perfect. We can get one more in there as well. That is a wonderful that sits and fits moment, isn't it? Although let's make sure we're flush together though there we go that's more what i'm after tidy up some of these trees as well i definitely want to do my own 
that sort of tree palette around here, I think. Let's uh, turn off this one so we can remove everything uh, with one click. Do appreciate the addition of a brush tool into the uh, into the base game, even if it's not my proper forest brush. The brush functionality is still appreciated. Cool, so we have that there. We found a bit more. Uh, we've got air pollution winches, have we? Interesting. Let's have a little look at our air pollution then. It's the first time we've seen that problem. Uh, oh yes, we did have this one. Yeah, we actually had someone comment last episode, didn't we? Um, about the air pollution coming from the switch on building. Would appear some people are tweeting about it, although... Average air pollution is still 0%. There's a touch of it blowing over the town, isn't there? But just the children might be affected, but you know what? From unclean air to a child's lungs. Anyway, back to the office park. So we'll feed this road through onto this one now. Some roads here. I think we'll start peeling off into some alleyway roads now. And start configuring some smaller office complexes around here. So I've got an idea of what I want to do with it. So let's come in, we'll do some smaller low density zonings. We'll get a larger one in of that. And I want to see if we can try complement that with essentially a little warehouse with a 4x2 zoning. Is ideally what I'd like to happen. Then we can bring up the road around the edge of that one, hook it in, and then essentially just repeat this process um, a couple of times around the office park to create sort of larger businesses rather than just mass zoning in a carpet of office. Let's have that on there. And then we'll do the little warehouse next door to it. Add it those roads. We will lose some zoning, which is going to be irritating. There we go. Let's make sure we get it all in one go. So definitely no high rises around the end of Inverneg. We'll keep it pretty tame, I think. Turn back to our mixed use over here. How are we feeling about it? This one's quite a chungus, isn't it? I think I would prefer a few smaller buildings than that. So what size is that? The full six, six by four, isn't it? Okay. So how about if we break it up a little bit? Let me get those zonings in. Maybe one larger one. And a big one on the corner there, maybe. Try and break it up a little bit. It's quite dark today, isn't it? Despite the fact it's a pretty cloudless day. <laughs> Whilst also at the same time raining. <laughs> okay, it's fine. Fine. The snow is at least clearing away there. So this is what I'm happy with here. So I now want to start relocating at the bus and the taxi depots to somewhere else as well. Let's grab the taxi depot. Can we just have you here? No, I don't really like it here at all. Uh, so let's move up a road coming off the collector here. And then we'll have this just outside of town. And we'll stick it here for right now. You're saying you don't have any car access, you sure about that? Just moving it one tile over seems to be okay. And then we've also got the bus depot over here as well. And I think these assets just go quite nicely. Sort of back to black blended into each other, don't they? I'll just cut into the landscape a little bit more here because I don't want these assets to um, start sloping and like warping their concrete around when you place these larger assets on, on hills. So we have this one here. We'll have the larger bus depot facing the collector road into town. And then behind that, we'll have our little taxi friend as well. Which hopefully is going to fit nicely into this space here. So we'll just push that one slightly back off the road, but of course the little concrete taxes extend, don't they? That's fabulous. And we shouldn't need to provide parking to either of these assets either. Because they've already got them built into them. Although that road there does feel a bit unnatural, doesn't it? Do we want to bring maybe an alleyway out to that one? And maybe down this side as well. I don't feel like those concrete edges there I just want a road next to them, don't they? And we'll put a tree in or something. Let's go for classic pine, shall we? Probably. But that's those two assets. Definitely a little bit more at home, isn't it? And uh, let's have a look at setting up some of that lower rent housing as well while we're over here by the bus depot and the tracks. 
Uh, so we would actually lose that one. I didn't want to do that, but it's okay. It's just because the junction has warped up a little bit, hasn't it? Let's do this instead then. Bring up this main road and then again use some alleyway uh, configurations to make more individual plots where this housing can sit. And I'd love to partner them with some parks as well. Um, a couple of basketball courts would be welcome. We have these just behind our fire station, looks like we can. We'll have basketball, basketball court. Then we'll have low rent housing. Don't mind a few tile blocks around here. Uh, and then there's an outdoor gym as well, isn't there? There is. So we'll have that one there. And then we'll do a low rent housing block there. Let's also chuck in some parking for them as well. Go for a medium parking lot and then we can wrap this up with some more alleyway. We will lose some zone in there, but we'll just trim it off the more regular size. So we do have garbage pile up at our advanced water pumping service. How are we doing for garbage processing then? That's something that needs to be addressed, I wonder. Do we want to maybe explore some development tree stuff? We've got the recycling center. Incineration plant is the next one along. And then industrial waste processing definitely sounds like its own build, doesn't it? Like it wants its own complex. Yeah, I don't mind spending two points on the incineration plant, though. I imagine this is incredibly polluted, isn't it? It is indeed. Um, and it is a chungus. I don't think we'll have it here, but let's have a look at it anyway while we've unlocked it. Oh, that is quite a nice... Well, not nice, is it? But well, it's, it's an incineration plant. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's a nice asset. It's a, it's a chungus bit of infrastructure, isn't it? I actually wouldn't mind maybe blending into the peninsula where this is. I think that might be quite a nice accompaniment. Almost looks like immediate processing for anything extracted out of the mine, doesn't it? Just because it's got that huge smokestack on it. Plus, industrial props are always welcome. Okay, I think we'll go for that then. Um, we'll have this enormous waste processing complex here. And we'll make it part of our water treatment centre here too. So, let's terraform out this little peninsula to hold the factory or incineration center and we'll go for hopefully this road here should hold it you might lose a little bit of this inlet but it's already pretty narrow anyway so i'm not massively precious about losing it yeah it really does eat into that actually doesn't it in that case then let's manipulate this terrain around here a little bit more How do we feel about having it here? It really looks like an extension of that ground pumping station, doesn't it? Now I'm assuming that isn't going to pollute the water supply. We actually don't know. Just have kind of a glance back at its numbers again. The medium ground pollution. Is that going to affect this, basically? I wonder. I guess there's only one way to find out, isn't there? Uh, is this also producing power? Is it? It is. That's cool. Um, so we can run a power line out of here. Now, do we have a transformer nearby? I don't think we do, do we? Where would be the nearest transformer? I think there's only one, isn't there, in Whiskey? Now, at some point, I wouldn't mind actually using these high-voltage power lines as network decoration, because we found out in Cities 1, you know, running these big kind of parallel super lines... Oh, there is milestone 15. Wonderful. More money for us. Um, but what I wanted to say was that these power lines um, make for really good parallel network decoration. So I'd love to have that as an excuse to use them somewhere. I'm guessing we're too wide to bring them through this space, right? No, there is a sweet spot there, actually. Thinking, do we want to export this power to the outside connection, perhaps? Might be an idea. Don't be worth it. To bring it straight across. Is this really going to ruin the ambience of the town? Because you do see pylons running through towns, especially in the UK. It's definitely not a unusual sight. 
I just think it's nice infrastructure decoration as well, you know. I think we'll go for it. I think we'll export this power directly to the outside connection. Um, because we've got quite a lot of it um, already from existing power infrastructure. So I reckon if we're just gonna come straight across here. Yeah, we can just connect straight into that one. Yeah, and then I guess that is going to an outside connection, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's exporting that now. And we're now exporting much more as well. Uh, but that's only going to get even more, isn't it, once this comes into play. Okay then, let's, let's go for this. We'll export the power that comes from the incineration plant as extra power, because egg and bread doesn't actually need it. And we'll run this right through these big industrial areas. Can we come across the buildings here? Yeah, we can there, I think, can't we? Want to make sure it's in nice, rigid sections of power line. So we'll keep this one coming right by the tracks, which will give it a really cool industrial look, I think. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Then we'll need to find a way to get through with the bridge, like parallel with those train tracks. Bring it across, and then boom. Now, how much is that export going to jump up by there, I wonder? Not too much. Is this actually producing anything yet, though? Yeah. There's usage is all over the place, so it just dipped down to 7% there, didn't it? So we're exporting a slight amount more now, I guess. But uh, I'm definitely not against having some infrastructure like that running right through the town. That's a layer of realism for me, that I think. Power lines cutting through the city. Very nice. And uh, that's another big bit of industrial infrastructure there, isn't it, for the town. Plus a ton of garbage processing. We shouldn't need to touch garbage processing for a long time now. And, uh, is this a modular upgrade one? It is. What can we do here? An extra furnace. We can do garbage truck depot. And we can do storage extension. How much are these? For more garbage trucks, how many does it have at the minute? 50, all of which are collecting. Okay, we can have that. Uh, we'll go for the extra furnace. That's just going to be burning in energy production. Well, if we're exporting the energy, more efficiency is always going to be appreciated, isn't it? And we might as well go for the third upgrade if we're getting all of them. How about that one there? Cool. Yeah, almost looks like a sort of nuclear reactor, this one, doesn't it? It's quite blocky. But uh, we'll have it here anyway, I think. Then we'll have it there. Uh, so it certainly wants to be sort of finished off, doesn't it, with some road around it. I reckon we'll box in. Um, we'll add a little access way there for it. We'll keep the office space and parking. We'll have it as part of the facility, I think. I actually wouldn't even mind providing a bit more parking over here either. I imagine there'd be quite a lot of people that work at a place like this. So we'll wrap that up and then give it another sort of little office HR admin block with a larger office zone and perhaps a touch of small industry again. So it was a good combo, isn't it? Office and industry goes quite well. Uh, and then we use soften all around here to kind of blend this landmass back in. It looks like it might want retaining more keys, actually. We definitely need to soften that out. It's a little bit janky, isn't it? And again, I'd sort of prefer that one, actually. I don't like using those retaining more keys everywhere. I think it's quite easy to always fall into the trap of using them. But um, I think they can be overdone sometimes. It's nice in a canal district, but otherwise I think I'm happy with that. Having done all that, I really hope it doesn't pollute our groundwater. <laughs> because it's right next to the water pumping station, so we'll see how it goes. Cool, this low rent housing is starting to come in now, so let's continue to bring up some of those larger tower block spaces. Let's also turn off grid snapping here as well. If we can try and create some more towers here within our uh, low rent housing district. Try get some taller ones in. I uh, definitely don't want two growing there. Let's remove that one and we'll stick another sports park near it. Uh, let's go for a small playground set next to that tower there, I think. Cool. Definitely want to have, um, at least in the UK, this is a vibe you see all the time. You're driving past these kind of tower blocks. 
uh, by putting Ming in infrastructure, often by industry. So we'll see how they go. Having right by the tracks here, I think it should be quite nice. Not a bad little addition into the town centre that's developing around here either, is it? I do really like this. You probably saw in the intro a uh, cinematic, if we end up using that bit of footage that is. Um, just how busy Inverneg train stations become now with that addition of the change in the line we did last episode. There's uh, a ton of people waiting for the bus now. Which is uh, really nice to see, isn't it? Look at that. First proper bit of walking porn I think we've had, because I don't think um, Whiskey ever really got that busy with its walking. Um, there's a few around the main little sort of elevated bus station up here. I walk around. And um, some up toward the castle as well, around this way. This gets quite busy. I say that there's like no one here. <laughs> but um, we get the trams out here as well get a little bit busy. But uh, yeah, nothing has gotten as busy as um, in the next train station yet, it would seem. There is some nice walking to be had by the cathedral though. Anyway, we are getting distracted. Yeah, that's uh, a real nice addition into the skyline of Inverneg there, isn't it? That uh, big industrial town. I'm happy for Inverneg to be the more industrial town, you know. Like the view a bit here as well from the campus we did. Uh, let's continue to mix and match row housing and mixed use. Keep getting some in here. From there as well. And... I guess we'll go for keep it quite small actually. There we go, different sizes. Try and break up the blockiness of it all. Make sure we grow to that full size there too. In terms of the space in the middle of the island, um, I guess we can just flash this out with parks. I don't really want lots of buildings here. Um, large city park. We placed one of these over here, didn't we? Well, let's do. Small park on the corner. Do small playground here. Got a couple of tennis courts in here as well, why not? And a large playground over here. I wouldn't mind some small zoning maybe. Like I just don't want car parking to generate here because it's all pedestrianised of course, so it really breaks the immersion if there's a massive car park, but I wouldn't mind a small shop or something. I guess we'll wait and see. But really starting to like how this waterfront is developing now with the, the row housing and the mixed use. I think maybe we want to mix a little more row housing in between some of these. Maybe let's go for row how, uh, mixed use in the middle of that row housing there. It is always constant rain, isn't it? <laughs> it never ever ends. It's hilarious almost. If you don't laugh, you'll cry. You know, I'm happy with these facilities. The office demand is pretty insatiable right now. How are we doing for employment in the city? 9.4%. I think a couple of episodes ago when we started Inverneg, that was at like 14%, wasn't it? So it's definitely coming down. Just got to keep providing all these jobs for them. Now, how are we feeling about our tile blocks over here now too? This uh, parking lot's really filled up, hasn't it? I wonder if you all people... You just park in Saunders family. Where do you live? Over here, okay. Hoping it'd just be people living here that would park there, but obviously not. It's okay though, as long as they're getting used right, we're charging them for it. So. But either way, I'm liking how the town is growing up now. Let's move into a time lapse. I want to bring some paths around our office park and some tree patterns as well. Maybe some more satellite campuses, little parks like this as well, I think. Do some more of these. And also carry on zoning up our mixed use and row housing pattern within the spaces that are left near the waterfront. Some more trees and whatnot. And then really tie uh, the northern end of Inverneg together. Well, let's do some detailing and then we'll be right back.
You know, City Skylines 2 has really brought out the masochist in me. Every time I see one of these car crashes now, I'm like, oh, let me see. Like, let me see what's happened. <laughs> I'm absolute psycho, obsessed with staring at car wrecks. I'm not, I promise. It's just something about that little flashing car icon. But we have had a car crash on the bridge, which has now been uh, changed around a little bit. So we were getting some traffic here. And this could probably be further optimised. I imagine at some point it's also going to want an elevated pathway. But we have added two pathways and also adjusted where and how the pedestrian crossings appear. Uh, this is like, it's super busy, like insane. If anything, now it probably wants a method of transport more than buses. This is probably screening for a tram at this point. Because uh, it's just it's just so busy. Um, Maybe we'll put another station further down in Veneg. And while we are down here, we've also added the extension onto the university because we had the demand for it. Uh, we also need another college as well, which I imagine is going to reside in Bourbon when we get to build that town. I guess we could do it over here too. Uh, we'll see where we can squeeze a college in. But this has now been added onto it as well. Uh, and the bus line is just getting tons of use. You see how busy it is here. Um, everyone's getting off the train. Uh, there's lots of really good walking porn here, which we haven't really had in CS2 yet. So I'm really happy to see that. It's um, tremendously exciting. The train is so loud. <laughs> I'm so sorry. But uh, yes, please enjoy this very, very busy platform. It's very satisfying to look at. And then they're all spilling out as well and walking into the Canal District, which is very exciting. But traffic is flowing around it. Those adjustments have definitely helped. I've also extended the bus system down as well. And taking a look at the wider townscape now. I'm really enjoying how Inverneg is developing. On the back side of the train station, we brought in a road which is going to help serve some outer lying suburbia at one point, or well, one day. And I eventually envision this will wind its way over the hill, linking up with local roads over here. This one as well. And probably, yeah, the one coming out of Whiskey. And um, we'll all converge in Bourbon. Kind of like all roads lead to Bourbon, if you like, coming out of these ways. So just. Preparing that in advance, and then some classic office zoning uh, industry as well that like we've been doing in today's episode. Uh, in between the power line and the rail, so nice to see that infrastructure coming in. Uh, you're definitely used to seeing sort of tower blocks and office space and car parking on the rails in the UK as you go past them. So really happy with how all the infrastructure has turned out in Inverneg. It's, uh, it's pretty cute to look at, I think. And coming down onto the waterfront, uh, it's really nice. Got some tree linings here as well, and uh, I really like the view of the bay here. Uh, this commercial thankfully has spawned well it's, it's changed now it didn't have any car parking on it but now it does it's a little shop on the waterfront there uh, lots of parks and pathways and trees and then really like this view of the bay a uh, really nice angle here i'll just continue to bring in that row housing with european uh, mixed use dropped in a plaza in the middle here which gives us a really nice uh, just sort of like focal point plaza with all the european zoning around it uh, as a bit of a sort of busy center for the canal district there's commercial around here and see a really nice blend in between the mixed use and the row housing. Really nice to mix and match it in I think. Again, that's definitely inspired from Teddy's video on the official channel a couple of weeks ago. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. We did uh, shout it out when we uh, credited the canal design to uh, Teddy Radko. Uh, criminally undersubscribed, please go show Teddy some support. And then up here we got in the little path pattern around the edge of the park with some very basic tree patterns. Uh, nothing overly exotic. And then lots of that forest brush again uh, back in here now to try and separate the industry away from the town with lots of thick forest boundaries. So we'll just wait for that to grow in. And then car parks are getting a decent amount of use now as well uh, over here. And then we also have this little pathway uh, that meanders through a little forest and then crosses over in one of these cute little suspension bridges. And then arrives back at our big incineration plant that hasn't poisoned the water, thankfully. So if you were wondering... It doesn't affect it. You can have them right next door to each other uh, without any effect. And it's really added quite a lot to the town of Inverneg, hasn't it, as we fade back out. Um, again, this road also comes back up through here. Uh, it crosses over the rail because all the terrain here is kind of like crossing over each other, so it's actually quite nice. But yeah, so this will eventually go off on a back road. I imagine we'll probably split it here as well with another roundabout and then feed another road off uh, this direction and... I think here, unless you guys have anything better of an idea to put above Inverneg, I think we're just going to have a bunch of low-density housing on the hill. Uh, we'll do a separate build for this. And then it can just overlook all the main density of the towers, the low rent housing near the city centre and the train. Uh, all this kind of big commercial touristic waterfront by the canals and then the university over here. 
I think we'll just have some outer line suburbia sat on the hillside. And then there's another side of Inverneg uh, to develop over here as well. It did also drop down the crematorium here as well because we were getting um, all the hearses coming from Whiskey to collect the dead. Um, so got that crematorium there, but again, when we come to develop this side of the town here, which we'll probably do next episode, I imagine, uh, we'll find a proper place for that crematorium. But I'm really liking Inverneg, all the different networks, this new power line, like as ugly as they are, these huge, enormous like power pylons, um, they're real bits of infrastructure that you see in the world. It's like it's all been, you know, squirrels into as tight a space as possible to allow for rentable space to be built. And then the whole town has really uh, come together with the additions on the north side of it today. As we blend back into that very heavy industrial mining sector. And a really nice, busy train station as well. But otherwise, guys, that is going to do it for today. Let's thank you all so much for watching. If you've enjoyed it, likes, comments and shares below really do help me out. And even as much if you haven't enjoyed it, please feel free to leave me a dislike as well. If you're interested in supporting the channel, there are links down to Patreon and Instant Gaming below where there's a variety of bonuses including our Patreon exclusive podcast which has made a return this year and you can always find a fantastic deal on Instant Gaming, lots of cheap prices for all your favourite games and it does help support the channel as well which is always nice. As always an enormous shout out to the beautiful people with fantastic character that are our patrons with the special roll call to Felix Wilkinson, thank you for all your support on the videos and the channels guys really glad you all enjoy the content so much and big shout out to Anthony as well who finally got his bar name today <laughs> thank you for the name of Inverneg and we'll definitely get that sim named as well once we can see someone leaving who is actually employed there so it's actually Anthony working there but otherwise please do enjoy some cinematics of today's edition across the north side of Inverneg but I'll shut up and leave it there let's thank you all so much for watching and as always enjoy the rest of your day Thank you.